Blessings family, and welcome back to End Time Revelations. Today we are going to talk about a topic that will surely leave you speechless. Practically anyone who has ever studied science will most probably be familiar with the name Albert Einstein. The German-born physicist Albert Einstein is recognized as one of the most important figures in science throughout the 20th century. He is most known for his theory of relativity, which completely changed how we think about gravity, space, and time. But his love for science changed his entire perspective and reasoning about God. This is because science and spirituality are like two parallel lines. Science is mostly based on evidence, while spirituality is based on faith in the unseen. In Einstein's famous letter to Eric Gutkind in 1954, Albert Einstein declared his stands about the existence of God, the Bible, and his belief in the supernatural. But I can say with proof that Albert Einstein got it all wrong. So in the letter which Einstein addressed to philosopher Eric Gutkind, which is now referred to as Einstein's God Letter, presently kept in the Albert Einstein archives at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Einstein stated that he did not believe in a personal God and that conventional religion, particularly Judaism and Christianity, was like an outdated childhood belief. He stated, which I quote, that the Bible is a collection of honorable, yet still purely primitive legends, which are nonetheless pretty childish, and the word God is for me nothing more than the expression and product of human weaknesses. When commenting on the Jewish people, Einstein continued by saying, for me, the Jewish religion, like all others, is an incarnation of the most childish superstitions. He also expressed his appreciation for the Jewish people in his writings, notably for their tenacity in the face of persecution. So Albert Einstein knew very well that there was a God, but his ego, which was derived from his advanced knowledge in physics, was too big for him to admit this fact. When the letter was initially made public in 2018, it generated a commotion because some critics saw it as proof that Einstein was an atheist. Others contend that Einstein's beliefs were more sophisticated than that and that he regarded spirituality and science as complementing each other rather than as being at odds with one another. But the Bible was very clear about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. For spiritual things are foolishness unto the carnal man, for they cannot receive the things of the Spirit, neither can they know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So in this letter of Paul to the Corinthians, he made it clear that there is a great gulf between spirituality and carnality, and that is exactly where Albert Einstein got it all wrong. He felt that the laws of spirituality should be consistent with the laws of physics. He felt that the only way spiritual things can be justified is when it corresponds to science. But again, when you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible again made it clear that spirituality is grounded in faith, not by sight. But there is something critical about Albert Einstein's God letter that a lot of people have still not realized. His beliefs and theories about God were masterminded by one man, Baruch Spinoza, who was a great inspiration to Albert Einstein. Dutch philosopher Baruch Spinoza was of Portuguese and Jewish ancestry. His theories and philosophy about God was something that influenced several scientists like Albert Einstein, who openly professed their love for Spinoza's theory. But what did Spinoza preach that convinced popular scientists like Albert Einstein? The main idea of Spinoza's philosophy is his conception of God, the conventional idea of God as a personal entity who created the cosmos and meddled in human affairs, was rejected by him. He advocated a more expansive and abstract understanding of God as the essential component of the cosmos. In Spinoza's worldview, the only thing that exists is God or nature. He believed that humans are an embodiment of this material, as are all other things in the cosmos, in the sense that it is a facet or expression of the one and only essence. Everything that exists is thus a part of God. But we can say without a doubt that Spinoza's theory about God is a farce, a deception, and a well-crafted falsity to sway people's reasoning from who God really is. In a nutshell, Baruch Spinoza was trying to say that he believes thee is a God, but God is no different from nature. So from Spinoza's perspective, rivers, trees, mountains, the clouds, and everything in the universe is what makes up God. Apart from that, Spinoza believed there is no feasible being called God, but there was one giant loophole that invalidates Spinoza's theories. If God was the same as nature, then who created the universe, the trees, the mountains, the beautiful waterfalls, and every other thing Spinoza tagged as nature? Recent studies on tens of species of butterflies have proven that creation was not a mere coincidence, but rather the work of a master craftsman who is God. The position of the sun, moon, and stars. The beauty of nature, the complexity of the earth, 
and mankind proves beyond doubt that the earth did not appear by coincidence as Einstein or the Big Bang Theory claimed. But everything you see today is the reflection of the handwork of God captured in the book of Genesis. So Albert Einstein's doubt in the existence of God, which was derived from Spinoza's theories, is nothing more than attempting to put a square peg in a round hole. That is attempting to equate spiritual things to science. And that is the point where he got it all wrong. But there is something very important that we all have to know. There is a God, a God who created you and everything in the universe. And the only thing he wants you to do is to believe in his son, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, verse 16. If you are not yet saved, then the best thing to do now is to give your life to Christ and the Lord God himself will take charge of your life. Please do us a favor by liking this video, share it with your friends and subscribing to this channel. See you in the next video.